Red Nation, do I have a deal for you? I have a test which is 99.5% accurate for detecting breast cancer. It's super affordable. You want to buy it? I'm, I'm willing to sell. Is accuracy actually going to be a good metric that you want to use to assess a test for medical imaging? The answer is actually no. Accuracy alone is not a good metric. And we're going to go through why as we go over what we call ROC or receiver operator characteristics. This was first developed during World War II when the job was actually to detect if there was an enemy coming towards you. For our purpose, we're actually using it for medical imaging and we're trying to detect if there's a difference between normal anatomy and abnormal anatomy, for instance, between a normal anatomy and between a breast cancer. We like to use a little square like this to talk about the different options that are possible when we're making our decision. If we knew the ground truth values, that's what we're calling the true values here. It can be actually normal. So this is just normal breast tissue, for instance, and it can be an actual abnormal. So a cancerous tissue. Then if you look at the observed response, so after looking at the image, for instance, the radiologist is going to make a decision and say either there's cancer here or there's not cancer here. If they call it normal, that's one option as an observer, and they can also call it abnormal as an observer. Then we'll fill out the different options within this little square here. If it's actually normal and we call it normal, that's a true negative. So we got it right. There's not actually an abnormal finding there and we said there wasn't an actual abnormal finding, so that's true negative. If it's actually abnormal, so if there is cancer, but it's missed, that's what we call a false negative. So we called it normal. If we call it abnormal, but it was actually normal, that's what we call a false positive. And then if there is actually cancer there, for instance, it is abnormal, and we call it abnormal, that's what we call a true positive. So the first metric we could think about is the one that we were talking about earlier called accuracy. So if you add up the cases where you had a true positive or a true negative, then you divide them by all the cases. So the reason this metric isn't very good is because it doesn't take into account how often you're going to find this abnormality within the patient population. So for instance, in the case of breast cancer, you're doing a screening so it's something that is actually going to be found relatively infrequently. So the test I talked about earlier was actually just telling every single patient that they don't have breast cancer. If we do that, then we're still going to have a good metric on this accuracy standpoint, but it's not going to be a good test at all because we don't actually find anyone's breast cancer early. That's why accuracy is actually not a good metric and generally not used in medical imaging. We'll have a couple more definitions as we go. I've drawn here a little rectangle, and in this rectangle is the ones that we're actually considering here. So that's what's on the denominator. If we add up the false negatives and the true positives on the denominator, and on the numerator, we have the true positives. So that'll give us the true positive fraction. What's the case there, where there actually is an abnormality? There is actually breast cancer there. We also call this the sensitivity. So how sensitive is the test to find the disease when the disease is present? That's the sensitivity. On the other hand, if the disease is not actually there, how often are you getting it correct? So that's the true negative fraction. So you take the true negatives and then divide it by the true negatives plus the false positives. We call this one the specificity. If the patient does not have a disease, what's the percentage that you're going to get this correct? If the patient does not have a disease, we can also talk about the false positive fraction. We take the false positives, and since the denominator didn't change, we just changed the numerator between one of these classes and the other, we can see that we actually have the false positive fraction is actually just one minus the true negative fraction. Likewise, remember we talked about the true negative as being the specificity of a test. If the patient does not have the disease, what's your fraction of getting that correct? The false positive fraction is minus the specificity. We've got the definitions out of the way. We can actually talk about doing the test 
and actually taking a couple different populations. So one is a population of people that do not have the abnormality. We call these normals. And one is the population that have the abnormality. If it was a perfect test, there would actually be no overlap between the groups of people that are normal and the groups of people that are abnormal. We wouldn't actually have to be talking about any of these metrics to classify how good the test was because it would just be this nice perfect test. But in reality, the tests that we have in medical imaging typically are not perfect. And so we want a way to talk about the ability of a test to differentiate between a class of people that are normal and a class of people that are abnormal. And for most of these tests, actually we can think about the distribution of people as following a bell-shaped curve. So a curve that we call a Gaussian curve. This is two Gaussian curves. On this side here is the Gaussian curve of people that are normal and how they're distributed as a function of the output of this test. And then on this side here, you have a group which is abnormal and then what their results are as a function of this test. Then what we have is a threshold parameter and we can actually move that threshold parameter and change the actual characteristics of this test for each of those sensitivity and specificity metrics. So if this is the abnormals here and then we start with a threshold parameter right here, you can see that for the abnormals, half of the abnormals here, we're actually going to get wrong. And then half of the abnormals, we are actually going to get right. The ones on this side in green is the true positives and the one on this side in yellow is the false negatives. So the sensitivity for this test, as we have it defined right now, is actually one half. We'll also define what we call the ROC plot, and that's actually going to plot the sensitivity on this axis. It's the true positive fraction on this axis. And then on this axis, it's actually one minus the specificity, which is the false positive fraction. For one given threshold that we have for this test, we actually get one point on this ROC curve. So that one point on this ROC curve, you can see here, it has a sensitivity of one half. On the other hand, if you look at the true negatives, that's what's under this part of the curve here. The true negatives, we've actually captured almost all of the true negatives correctly. The false positive fraction is actually very close to zero, or the specificity of the test for this one operating point is actually very close to 100%. If we move that threshold point a little bit, we can actually define another operating point, and we can do that a couple times here. And as we continue to move to new operating points, we can see that the sensitivity of the test is now increasing. So this area in green is actually going up, and that means also we're going up here on the y-axis. So the sensitivity of the test is increasing. The specificity of the test is going down, so our point is actually moving a little bit to the right here. Now you can see we're starting to get some false positives. So the false positive fraction is actually going up a little bit. Now we have a test which is relatively balanced from the perspective of the sensitivity and the specificity. If we continue to move that threshold parameter, you can see now that we're getting more false positives. And now we're at the opposite side as we were before. So now our sensitivity is very good. So our position on the y-axis here is very high, but now our specificity has gone down a lot. As our specificity goes down, we're moving to the right on the x-axis here. We'll just walk it through again here. As you can see, our threshold parameter is moving. And at each point, that single point that we have for our operating point for that test is moving. If we put all those points together, we actually get a plot that looks like this. So for each one of those, that was a separate point. And then now I've added a few more than I showed you before to define essentially a full, what we call ROC plot, where the sensitivity is on the y-axis. That has to do with how well we're detecting the actual true abnormalities. And, and one minus the specificity is on the x-axis. 
And that has to do with how well we're actually classifying the true normal cases. This ROC curve actually looks pretty good. We'll take a look at a less optimal test now so that we can get a feeling for how that ROC curve actually performs. These two Gaussians actually have a lot more overlap and you can see at that same point where we started last time, there's actually a lot more false positives at the same threshold operating point. So even when our sensitivity wasn't that high, our specificity also wasn't perfect as it was in the last case. And as we scroll through and we change the parameters, you can see now our false positives are really increasing more. So we'll scroll all the way to the end and we can get a sense of what that ROC curve would look like. So again, I've added a few more points here than the ones I've showed you, but in general, you can see this ROC curve. And if you compare it to that last one, we can get a sense of the fact that this one actually is not up into this corner nearly as much, right? What we would actually like is a nice test, which has a perfect sensitivity. So that's up here all the way on the y-axis and it has a perfect specificity that's all the way at the beginning of the x-axis so what we want is to be all the way up here in this corner and you can see we're actually not achieving that here at all if we put it in terms of a comparison with the test that we did earlier you can see the first test where there was much less overlap between the two populations the abnormal and the normal with our test. That was a good test because the test is actually good at separating between the two. When we have a test which is not so good, no matter how we change the threshold or the operating point, we actually can't get that really desirable behavior. And then down here, this line here, that actually represents just pure guessing or just rolling a dice. We can make curves like this which again, we call ROC curves or receiver operator characteristic curves for a specific test and a specific radiologist, you can define a receiver operator characteristic curve. You can also define these types of curves for a certain type of imaging system is doing at a certain task. If you don't wanna sit around and critique the actual shape of these curves and you actually like a simpler characteristic, what if you want just one number to define how well your test is doing? What number could that be? If you actually look at these curves, we know this is the worst one where we're actually just taking a random guess. And then here we can see we're doing a little bit better. And then here is the best of these three tests that we have. And so actually a metric which works really well is actually just taking the area under this curve. For each of these three tests, you can look at the area under the curve. And we love three letter acronyms, right, in medical imaging. So the area under the curve we call the AUC. If you start with just a coin flip, you would get this value here. And then you're just taking your little square and you're dividing it is just one half of the area of this square. Then our test where there was more overlap between those Gaussians, you can see it's 0.66 was the area under the curve. And for the test where there was not very much overlap between those two, you can actually see that we have a value of 0.94. We now have a metric which is really good at defining how well a test is gonna perform. And depending on the outcomes of the test, you can actually decide where you wanna operate on this curve. Which is more important, to actually pick up all of the cases of abnormality, or actually not to make a mistake when it's actually negative. So depending on how important those two things are, you can trade off where you wanna operate on this curve. Here is just how you can visualize it. As we've talked about before, the sensitivity is this y-axis value, and then one minus the specificity is on the x-axis. So if you draw a line from all the way down here, that is the specificity. This is a task where we think there's a relatively equal weight between the sensitivity and the specificity. But if we wanted to weigh one more than the other, we could actually move the threshold value such that we move our operating point up here or we move our operating point down here. So now you know how the area under the curve and the ROC actually work, but do you know how the contrast to noise actually helps to characterize an image? See our video coming up next.